Welcome back to Automotive Blockchain, everyone. Today, we will be discussing IOTA Stronghold. And before we get into that, I want to just uh, briefly mention where IOTA is at right now, and I'm pulling up Coin Market Cap. And just so you know, this information that I do in any of my videos is not to be construed or received as financial advice at all. I am not a financial advisor. It is for information purposes only. So coin market cap has IOTA at just over 30 cents. And if you were to look at the uh, kind of the 30 day trend, you can see it pretty much has uh, gone from right about 22 cents on up to 30 cents of where it's at today. So over a 30 day time frame, it has kept increasing. Even if you were to look at it from a three month perspective, as my computer runs slow, I do apologize about that. Even if you look at it from a three month perspective, you can see very quickly that it has continued to grow from 18 cents uh, on up to the 30 cents where it's at today. Now let's get over to Stronghold. Crypto Newsflash popped up this article just the other day and it reads, IOTA Foundation publishes backbone of the new Chrysalis Wallet Stronghold. So I've gotten a few messages on the DM asking me to kind of break things down a little bit more. And I want to reemphasize this for everyone that's listening is that my channel is dedicated to the automotive industry. And it's not just to the people who truly deeply understand blockchain technology, uh, but it's also going to be to those people who are new to the industry, trying to figure out what is this technology that's coming down the pike towards them, that they'll be utilizing these services uh, you know, on their day-to-day -day basis. We're talking about the people at the dealerships, the people at tier two, et cetera. So that is also who this channel is going to be uh, dedicated to as well. So my goal is to cover a whole gambit of information. And here we go. So for those people who are kind of new to this, Chrysalis, what is Chrysalis in a nutshell? Kind of consider it like your your mobile device. You notice how your mobile device always wants to go through upgrades. Well, in this particular case, on a much more sophisticated fashion, Chrysalis is IOTA 1.5. It is a series of upgrades to the protocol that achieves enterprise readiness before uh, Coordicide. And Coordicide is version 2.0 of the upgrades. But if you wanted to get an idea of what Coordicide is, there is a link in the description that can bring you over to this video that talks about the next steps in IOTA's evolution. Now on to IOTA Stronghold. I went over to the blog.iota.org and just wanted to pull up the information directly from there. So here is how it is broken out. Stronghold is a collection of multi-purpose libraries for securely managing passwords, personal data, and private keys. And again, I'm going to tie in how this will pertain to the automotive industry and they just make it easy just by the way that they write this. So, but I want to put this out here first and this is what I consider to be awesome stuff written by, uh, by IOTA. What we have learned from the perpetual attacks on our ecosystem is that security must be, gui must be a guiding principle in digital ledger technologies, not an afterthought. As a foundation committed by charter to the dual notions of contributing to open source and furthering education, we are morally compelled to put our energies into improving the greater good, not merely our own lot. In this context of being a good digital citizen, the best thing we can do is to offer the means to enhance the security posture of all types of software, including cryptocurrencies, distributed ledger technologies, and even financial infrastructures like exchanges and custody wallets. That introduction there speaks volumes to me talking, in my opinion, the integrity of their intentions. So I like that. And one of these things I've been thinking about as I'm doing these videos is I want to try to relate this to real world. So when you're thinking about going through any particular thing that you want to do in your life and you want to do any particular task, think about the proactive statement that you are going to say before you get into anything and consider how purposeful it is. So you can see here in this particular instance, IOTA is being extremely purposeful with what their intent is with respect to how they're going about conducting their business. And yes, I understand businesses or businesses. I'm just talking about the ideology behind it. All right. They go on to say there are many challenges involved in securely managing digital secrets like passwords, vehicle access codes, and wallet seeds. What are vehicle access codes? Those are basically codes that are in the vehicle that can be used to lock or unlock the car. 
Certain technologies can be placed with, over top of or around the vehicle access codes that will enable someone to do ride sharing. So if you have partial ownership of the vehicle, then a vehicle access code could be put in place so that you could get into the car, drive it for a specific point in time, and then after that is done with, then you no longer have access to that vehicle because your credentials for that vehicle access code have been denied. So let's get a little bit further into this. Uh, as the article goes on and reads, applications need to run on any type of hardware from phones to cars where possible, leveraging trusted execution environments. Once again, trusted execution environments. Now, in a nutshell, what is Stronghold? Stronghold is a secure software implementation with the sole purpose of isolating digital secrets from exposure to hackers and accidental leaks. It uses versioned file-based snapshots with double encryption that can be easily backed up and securely shared between devices. So how does that relate to you? I guess one way that we could look at this is if you've ever gone to a cookout or some type of family gathering and you have that one person who has made this secret barbecue and everyone for years has always wondered what are the ingredients for that? And you've tried getting that person drunk, you've tried bribing that person, but there's no way you can hack into them and figure out what in the world their secret is about that particular ingredient in those ribs or that great tasting brisket. And then one day you hear that grandpa's little secret to the best tasting brisket and the, the ingredients for that is stored in a box in the attic. And you go up to the attic and you see that box and it has a lock on it. But you find a way to shimmy that thing open and then you realize that there's a box inside of a box and you still can't get to it. That's that double encryption that uh, grandpa's talking about. You can't get to it and it's only shared between grandpa and grandma and they're the only ones that know what that ingredients are. So that is kind of like what they're talking about here. You can't hack into grandpa's secrets. All right. Moving down from there. At IOTA, we will begin rolling out IOTA Stronghold to secure the new wallet. In the next phase, we will have tight integration with IOTA Identity. Now, for those of you that are wondering, what in the world is IOTA Identity? IOTA has a whole platform that they are working on unifying digital identities. And they break it down in kind of like three different roles. And the first role is holders. Holders are owners of digital identities. They have ultimate control over their data and choose how much and with whom they share their data with. One of the things I want to say about that is when I was overseas uh, over in Mongolia, I noticed that a lot of people uh, carried around their own medical records in these little books. And as they went around to the different doctor's office, they would take this book or books with them and that would have their records in there. Um, so I found that to be interesting and it was all handwritten in there. Um, so that's something interesting with that. So that's holders. Second are the issuers. Issuers are trusted third parties or authorities that generate and issue credentials to holders, such as health records or identity documents. So the issuers will go ahead and generate the information to the holders so that the holders can have that and utilize that information, take that information wherever they so choose. Now, wherever they so choose, there are also verifiers. Verifiers are or any third parties that need to verify the authenticity of a card holder's or excuse me of a holder's data a verifier might for example need to validate that the holder is who they say they are a place where you can see this working would be in a local DMV that is the place where you would go to pick up your license or get your car registered those may be the verifiers of your identity and with identity there are also these decentralized identifiers these DIDs and decentralized identifiers serve as reference to a DID document this document contains data such as public keys enabling the holder to prove ownership of their personal data some of the use cases for this are address validation, age verification, and authority login. Link will be in the description for this so you can get an idea and dive into the digital identity a little bit more. But let's get back to Stronghold. For technical professionals, here's the interest point in this. 
the primary task of Stronghold is to isolate the activity of privileged functions from other programs. For example, a primary goal is to create a software enclave where private keys are used to sign messages without revealing those keys to other people. Going back to that wonderful tasting brisket I mentioned earlier, essentially you would be able to allow to taste it, but you would never know the ingredients. So <laughs> that is the, uh, the very basic way of explaining that. It is based on a suite of low-level libraries known as Stronghold Engine that provide tooling and algorithms to build secure systems. So this collection of libraries deals with the obfuscation encryption, or excuse me, obfuscation, encryption, usage, and sharing of secrets between devices. What is obfuscation? Essentially that is, you know, going back to that brisket example, Finally, you sit there and you start working on grandpa and you, he, he gives you the ingredients and you realize that some of it has been redacted or it's masked out or whatever, scribbled out. So you only have part of the data. Uh, so essentially it's hiding some of the original information uh, and content so that you know people can't use it because it's classified or whatever. So that is what that is about. Um, now, going on in this article, what will you do with Stronghold? So let's break it down. Let's block this thing down for everybody here. So blocking it down means it's a low-level engine that has a whole bunch of use cases. It's, it's completely agnostic. So flexible that the encryption algorithms can be swapped out at your leisure composed in new ways. So they want to make this as simplistic as possible for, from what I'm gathering, the everyday user in the cryptocurrency wallets as well as other applications. Now, this particular release and this blog post does go in and show examples. I'm going to highlight one that makes sense to everyone here. Example, Alice rents a movie using her phone to play back on her smart TV. The movie is sent to the TV as encrypted stream and a decryption key is synced to her device's stronghold. After 48 hours, the key is deleted from her stronghold by the service and the video can no longer be played. For any of you out there that are, especially in the US, that are utilizing Netflix, that are utilizing uh, Amazon Prime or whatever it is, you could do this in a number of ways. Now think about this for a quick second. Let's just say for instance, in the multimedia center, you decided that you have been paying a monthly fee for a Netflix account or an Amazon account, and you wanted to subsequently allow another user to access your account. Now, not that saying that they would allow this, but I'm just suggesting this, is that an idea for this would be you could let John or Jane Doe watch your Netflix account for a short period of time, but they would have to pay you a small sum of cryptocurrency, a microtransaction, in order to do that. Now, I'm not saying that's something that's actually going to happen, but that kind of gives you an idea of the limited view of that. In the future, Stronghold has not yet been formally audited for security vulnerabilities and is moving toward the next phase of public community engagement. We are now making this, uh, this work public in the hopes that the open source and security communities find the opportunity to review the design and implementation. At any rate, in late autumn of 2020, Stronghold will undergo a full external security audit after the audit's conclusion, the respective revisions and respective revisions we will declare the project mature enough to be used in your projects. So that wraps it up with IOTA and Stronghold. Go ahead and hit the like button if you've liked what you've seen here. And after that, please feel free to ring that bell to get notifications for future releases from Automotive Blockchain.